Good evening. I'd like to call the public hearing of the Region 15 Board of Education meeting to order. Could you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, student representatives, Liam and Kelly, please. Hello, everybody. I'd like to start off talking today um, about how the third quarter ends uh, this Tuesday, April 14th. So that's the home stretch of the year, so we're almost done. Um, and then we get summer, which is always fun. And so also towards the end of the year is prom and PHS class ad advisors have shared the prom 2015 informational sheet with the students on the region 15 gmails so in order to access that students can go on the region 15 emails and then click on the shared with me folder and it's right in there um, and the 2015 soon senior and junior prom will take place on sunday may 31st 2015 at the matrix center and banquet center or the matrix conference and banquet center in Danbury from 7 o'clock to 11 o'clock p.m. And the final thing I'd like to talk about tonight, since there's not a lot of stuff going on since we just had break, is the Europe trip, which occurred over vacation. Students left at 10 o'clock in the morning on Saturday, March 28th, and we arrived back yesterday at 5.30 p.m. We visited Amsterdam, Brussels, Paris, and London. Um, highlights included visiting the Anne Frank House, the Red Star Line Museum of Immigration, Notre Dame Cathedral, the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, Big Ben, the London Eye, Buckingham Palace, the Tower of London, Herod's, the National Gallery in Paris, and we also were able to see the changing of the guards. So the whole experience was extremely educational and it contained tours of all four cities which were led by very knowledgeable guides. We had bus tours as well as walking tours and in some cities we actually had both. So it was a great knowledgeable experience. It also allowed students to be exposed to different cultures and language that they wouldn't have been exposed to. Otherwise, um, many students, their parents would not take them on trips like this, so the only way to do it is to go through the school. Um, so also what was really amazing about this trip was the French students could speak with uh, native French speakers because we went to both Belgium and France. So that was really a good way for them to practice their skills that they've learned in school and apply them to real life situations. This opportunity was an experience of a lifetime and the highlight of many students' careers at Pomperog. On behalf of all the students on the trip, I would like to thank the chaperones for organizing the trip and I would like to thank the Board of Education for allowing this trip to occur. And speaking for every student on the trip and also many who weren't able to go this year, I sincerely hope that next year and in future years, Pomperog students will be able to have the same opportunity to go on a abroad trip um, by Pomperog High School. Thank you. So we have a lot of interesting news for sports and different events going on this week. Uh, it was nice to have the break off, but we have a lot planned to make this week and the upcoming weeks very fun. Um, this Friday, we have dodgeball for diabetes in the main gym here at Pomparag. That is from 7 to 10. Uh, it's a great way to raise money for research in diabetes, and all of the proceeds go to the American Diabetes Association. Um, there's still time for teams to sign up. The teams are of six or less people, and they have to be, um, have to be both boy and girl teams. The last day to sign up is the 8th. And again, it's a great opportunity to have fun here at Pomparag and also raise money for a great cause. Um, and the, for a first in Pomparag history, the Pomparag robotics team came in first place at the Hartford Regional. Um, that means that they're going to move to the competition at WPI, and that's going to be held from the 9th to the 11th of this month. And if we win there, then they go to nationals, and hopefully we can do that. Um, there hasn't been any games going on as far as sports-wise. There have been a couple of scrimmages for uh, varsity boys baseball, field hockey, um, and softball. But in the upcoming weeks, we have a lot of tennis matches and baseball games, uh, all that going on. 
this Wednesday, the 8th, the girls have a softball game against Richfield here at PHS, and that's at 4.15. Uh, and then they have another game at uh, 4.15 on the 9th against Masick. And these are the first two games of the season, so hopefully they do well. Um, the boys' varsity baseball team um, plays Ridgefield this Wednesday, the 8th, and Massac on the 9th, uh, and New Fairfield on the, the 10th. So that's three games in three days, so hopefully they have a record of 3-0, and which I hope they do. Um, the girls' varsity tennis has two games on the 8th against Bethel and uh, the 10th against Brookfield here at Pomfrog. And then the boys have a varsity game uh, on the 9th against Newtown. There will be more games uh, in the upcoming weeks, and you can find the schedules and times and the records on the Pomparag website under athletics. And I will be reporting at the next meeting about all the sports scores from all of the different spring teams. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly and um, Liam. Any questions of the student representatives? First, first place at the first place at the robotics competition. Yeah, yeah. At the um, the Hartford Regional, they placed first um, with their team and set three different records for the amount of points they had scored. Uh, their robot is supposed to take boxes and then stack them, and there's a bunch of different competitions. So it's the first time that they have gotten first place there and are able to move on. Okay, because you know, in previous years they've won things like the creativity award and. Kind of like what I would call honorable mentions. So I think going leaping right to first place, I, I think that's a great accomplishment because there's a, there's a lot of competition there. Yeah, and they have a, a very strong team, and there's a lot of different creative people, um, and that is led by Mr. Margansky, who is the robotics teacher. So they have you know a lot of different competitions that they have uh, not done so well at, but have you know come back in first place is you know very very good for them. Any other questions? Okay, there being none, we'll move on. Um, presentation, um, presentation of the 15-16 proposed Board of Education budget. Okay. Two, week, two weeks ago, the board presented its, <coughs> his, its proposed budget to the public. And I, I'm gonna apologize, because I know many of you have seen these slides several times, but we're going to do it one more time tonight. The board had three budget workshops to review the budget, and tonight the board is presenting its recommended budget for the public hearing and for subsequent board action. This is the Region 15 mission statement. It guides what we do, and it guides the development of the budget. We are committed to excellence, global, a global society and, decis and decision making based on the best interests, best interest of our students. The budget presented is for a 2.48 increase with a total dollar amount of 65 million, 263,007. Um, this indicates, um, you know, an overview of the budget amount. Our budget investment, there are five significant areas of investment that the board is making in this budget, and they are technology, math textbooks K through three, restoration of library books, the turf field at the high school, and new textbooks at the high school. This budget proposes no cuts to any services or programs for students. Particular examples of exemplary service programs and practices that we will continue to provide for our students are listed above. They being full day kindergarten SRBI services, upgrade curricula, updated library materials, digital learning academy, advanced placement courses, commitment to update technology and reasonable class size. In addition to maintaining these exemplary programs and practices, this budget provides for the improvements listed here. And we, um, uh, the backbone of um, technology, replacement of computers, other technology needs, grade three math textbooks, restoration of library books, replacement of the turf field coming from the Capitol Reserve this year, 
and new textbooks. And you, as indicated, you can see the dollar amount that um, will be spent. This table shows a comparison of the proportional share of regions, the region's budget that will be the fiscal responsibility of each town. The proportional share is based on the proportion of students that Region 15 educates from each town. By law, the calculation is based on enrollment on the October 1st of the previous year. Middlebury's proportional share is increasing by about a quarter of a percent, and Southbury's share is decreasing by about that same amount. Here is a summary of the major highlights of this budget. Technology, math textbooks, library books, turf field, new texts at the high school, continuing efficiencies and initiatives, a reduction of three teaching positions, and increased fixed cost. As you can see, we've gone through all these budget steps. We've you know, had several budget workshops, one being um, this evening at 5 o'clock, and tonight um, <coughs> is the culmination where we have the public hearing. And here you see, the, now you, you see what we've done. So tonight you will have your say and comments uh, on the budget. Um, I w encourage you to vote on May 6th, and I thank you. Okay, um, are there any comments from Board of e Education members regarding agenda items? Okay, there being none, I'll have comments from the citizens. The Board of Education will recognize Middlebury and Southbury residents. The citizens are asked to state their name and the town of residence, and to please limit your comments to the proposed 15-16 budget, and to limit your comments to three minutes. And seeing there's so many people here tonight, I'm really going to have to stick by that um, three-minute deadline. So does any, would anybody like to address or make comments regarding the budget? I ask you to come up to the podium and state your name and the town you represent, or you reside in, I should say. Thad Burr, I currently live in Southbury, lived in Southbury and Middlebury for 25 years, and had three kids in the school system here, went to six out of the seven schools. Um, first of all, I'm probably the only person in the audience that's going to say that I'm not in favor of the budget, and I'm going to explain why. I, I put some things in the newspaper recently, some facts. Uh, a couple of the things that I take exception to, and I feel strongly about this because there's a rising tide of discontentment with the Board of Education and this whole process. The, um, the idea, this is a pro forma uh, event right here. It's already been decided according to the newspapers that, this, that the whole board agrees on this budget and they're supporting Dr. Botsford's uh, proposal. So what I'm going to do is just state this for the record. First of all, um, the slide that you had up there is misleading when you say no budget increase, no budget increase, no budget increase, et cetera. The, the, the criterion that needs to be used, and it's used universally across the United States, is the cost per student each year, not the total dollar value of the budget. We have lost students steadily for eight solid years in a row, and we're going to continue, according to demographic projections, to lose students in this, in this district for at least another five years. And, may, and most other districts around here are projecting a 10-year ahead losing students. The, we've already lost 13% of our student population that continues to go down. So if you take the cost per student, the, the cost, uh, the inflation of this budget in the last eight years has increased by more than 40%. The cost of inflation, and I have, if anybody's interested, I have all the figures in my, my um, folder over here. The cost of inflation over that same period of time has been less than 20%. So the Board of Education and the, and the uh, Region 15 budget has increased by d more than double the cost of inflation for eight years in a row. Okay. I have had dozens of people call me and say, 
there has to be some rational thinking. There has to be some fair and balanced approach to this. Right now, this budget consumes 77 percent of every dollar we pay in taxes in Southbury, for example. That doesn't leave much for parks, for rec, for uh, infrastructure repairs, for roads, services, anything. I'd like to also point out the fact that Newtown spends almost $1,000 per student less, and yet they're nationally ranked. They're ranked 16th in the state. We're not nationally ranked, and we're, I, we're not even ranked in the top 45 in the state of Connecticut. So what I'm saying is, suggesting is, Pouring more money into this school system is not a guarantee of better results. What I'm asking the Board of Education and what I think the voters are asking is to do m more with the money you have. You already have more money per student than you've ever had. Mr. Burr, I'm going to ask you, you're, I've given you well over your three minutes. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. You're very welcome. Thank you. Let the gentleman go first. <laughs> Hi, I'm Don Winter. I've got uh, two kids in Rochambeau. We live in Southbury. Uh, nothing prepared, um, although I've had the pleasure of going back and forth with Mr. Burr in the Southbury patch in previous years. Um, yeah, the cost per student and declining enrolls has been addressed quite a few times. That. There are fixed costs, we understand. There's also costs being incurred by the national um, government on all these standards, test, core. Um, there's health care issues. There's things going on. And I just want to say that, um, cost per student aside, our costs have been well below the rate of inflation. Um, some people have been saying that this budget doesn't respect some of the poor people on, on um, fixed incomes. And uh, I would say over the last eight years, we've been very respectful of those with fixed incomes to the point that we've been disrespectful to our children. And in fact, I think we've actually been neglecting them. So I ask the board to please stick with 2.48. It's honest, it's fair, there's reasons up there why, and I know that you've been doing a great job of trying to keep the cost down. So that's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Lisa Siegel, and I'm a Southbury parent and co-president of the PESPTO. I, once again, would like to thank the administration and the Board of Education for all of your time and effort spent on the coming year's school budget. I wholeheartedly support the 2.48% increase over last year's budget. In fact, if I had my druthers, the increase would be greater as I don't believe it's in our district's best interest to have a budget that doesn't include contingency funds. That said, I understand the pressure our administration is under to appease some prickly members of our towns who may not prioritize education or who don't necessarily understand the value that good schools offer our community. Once the Board of Education uses due process and comes by a budget for the 2015-2016 school year, I would like to ask, I would like to plead that you publicly support it by using social media, print media, and public addresses. It is only fair, it is only due diligence to do this to offer the budget the best chance of passing the first time around. For the Board of Education to not do so, as was the case last year, is negligent, inexcusable, and not in the best interest of our schools or our children. I know I will do my darndest to get out the vote. I hope the Board of Education will too. Finally, there are three members of our Board of Education that consistently let their constituents know they are heard. Marion Manzo, Steve Suriani, and Jennifer Connolly respond to emails, inquiries, and in general, let us all know we are heard and that as our representatives, our voices matter to them. I hope that our voices, our wishes, and our passions about wanting what's best for our children is heard by all members of the Board of Education. Please support our children and pass the 2.48%. Thank you. Any other comments?
Hello everybody, I'm Christine Kubation and I live in Southbury. I've been a resident in Southbury for 18 years. Um, I recommend the 2.48% increase versus last year. Um, very impressed with the fact that you had three workshops to discuss the budget and you had several finance workshops this year to understand key areas like athletics, technology, and special services. And it's clear to me that this, res at this it's clear to me that this budget is responsible and necessary to meet basic needs. As of a month ago, you had received roughly 100 emails from Southbury and Middlebury constituents, and at this point it's probably more than that. And at the time, all but one supported the budget. It's important that this board unanimous, unanimous, unanimously support this budget. You've done your due diligence, and please let your constituents know that and understand why you're supporting this budget. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other comments? Good evening. My name is Deborah Chiron. I live in Southbury. And I want to say, too, that I am also highly favored in um, having the budget be 2.48. Um, Mr. Burr mentioned something that he said that in the last eight years, enrollment has gone down. And I think that that needs to be a red flag to our society in Southbury. Maybe it's going down because the school isn't where it needs to be or where our children deserve to be at this level. And last, when we were here last, we saw a wonderful presentation showing that Southbury students are not given as much allocation of money that all other students at other schools have received. So our children are not getting what other students are getting at other schools. So we're lacking. We're lacking there. And so, Mr. Burr, I'm sorry that you feel that, you know, our children, that we should not increase the budget, but we need people who want to live in our town and deserve the best to get the best. And we want people to move here and we want enrollment to go up and see that they will have a beautiful establishment for their children to come, to grow, and to learn, and have what they deserve. Why would you want to come to a beautiful town and live here if your children wouldn't be able to get the best that they deserve? So thank you very much. I really hope that this goes through, and I will do everything in my power to support the 2.48 increase. Thank you. Any other comments? Hi, my name is Lois Yeager. I'm from Middlebury. Um, like the others, I thank the board and the administration for your thoughtful work on this year, on the 2015-16 budget. Um, I share Deborah's, Deborah's um, thoughts about uh, Mr. Burr's comments. I feel that Region 15 is um, very responsible with its spending per student in comparison with the other regions in the state. We are in the bottom 40% of spending across the districts in the state. I think the 2.48 budget is responsible. Um, like uh, I think it was Lisa, I would support a higher budget because I do think it's irresponsible to not have any kind of contingency. but fully support the 2.48. Um, I hope that my representatives from Middlebury will fully support this budget and will publicly support this budget to ensure that it goes through the first time. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Going once. OK, there are no comments. Can I please have a motion to adjourn this meeting? Motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we're going to adjourn and take a, a quick few moments um, before we begin our regular board meeting. So that will begin um, at 8 o'clock exactly. Thank you.
I'd like to call um, uh, to order the regular meeting of the Board of Education. Could I have a motion to approve the minutes of the March 23rd regular meeting, please? Motion to approve the March 23rd meeting. Second. Any additions, omissions, or corrections? There being none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Unanimous. No, I'm oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Didn't see your hand, Jaron. Okay. Um, information and proposals, board member reports, finance and facilities committee. Madam Chair, we haven't had a meeting uh, since our last meeting. Okay. Therefore, we have nothing to report tonight. Okay. Policies and curriculum, I think that's the same situation. You are correct. Okay. And PTO, ditto. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, board member comments. Madam Chair, I guess just went through the time and I just, I wanted to, when people were speaking, uh, and though I do really appreciate, I really, really do everyone speaking uh, for or against the budget, um, I, coming to these things now, I think for seven years, both sitting on this side of the table and sitting out there, I do remember seven, six years ago, there were a lot of people that spoke um, against the budget. And I do uh, always, I hope that we do always encourage both sides of the argument, people that are against it, people are for it. So um, when people are speaking in public, um, if they could please, I mean, I, this is for next year, but please address the board and maybe not so much the other people that were speaking. Uh, I just think that creates a more open environment. And I, and I did want to just kind of maybe, maybe correct, since I do have the luxury of a microphone and they have to let me speak. Um, that uh, the I, I don't want to get into a numbers game, but but specifically Newtown actually I've just looked up the last figures and they actually spend more than us per person by by a hair, and there were two rankings, uh, U.S. News and Newsweek. We were not on the U.S. News, but we we were in Newsweek's top 500 schools, so um, and we shared that company. Uh, Newtown was not in that. Um, but we did share uh, in, in Newsweek's rankings, we were with Amity, uh, Cheshire, uh, Greenwich, and Litchfield. Um, so I won't, so there, whatever piece of, whatever way you want to slice the pie, I'm sure we're in some rankings, and I'm sure we're not in others. Uh, and even uh, two years ago, our CMT scores were some of the best in the state. You know, so uh, I think we do a very good job. I just wanted to maybe correct some of the misinformation out there because I, I don't want to see it in the paper tomorrow uh, incorrect. So thank you. Thank you, Steve. Any other board comments? Okay, there being none, we'll move on to the superintendent's report. Uh, Mrs. Botsford. Uh, there is no personnel report this evening. It is my pleasure to announce the 2015 commencement and graduation dates. Memorial Middle School will have their commencement on Tuesday, June 16th at PHS. Rochambeau Middle School, Wednesday, June 17th at PHS. And Pomparag High School will have graduation on Thursday, June 18th. You know where. Um, I also have some announcements to um, just some more celebrative news uh, concerning student achievement results. Um, we had recently received the information, it was already in the paper, uh, that the class of 2014, uh, Pomparag High School, graduation rate was 96.7%. Um, the information had previously been embargoed by the State Department of Education. So when we last gave the student achievement report, we were forbidden from sharing that data. Okay. So it is my pleasure to announce that. That is the highest graduation rate for the past five years. Uh, we also received a report from the College Board. They are the people who do uh, the AP tests. And the class of 2014 at Pomparag High School, 57% of students took at least one AP test. And 49.5% of students scored at least one three or higher. 
where three is uh, the score in most colleges that will afford our students college credit when they arrive there. That's half of the students getting credit uh, for at least one college course while they're still here at PHS. So just wanted to add that. And that's the end of my report. Thank you. Okay, comments from citizens again. Um, please state your name and the town you reside in and limit your comments to three minutes. Any comments? Okay, there being none, we'll move on. We have no old business tonight. Um, we do have new business um, requiring board action. Um, approval of policy, um, update, an approval of an update to policy number 5151. May I, uh, could I please have a motion? Move that the Board of Education, upon recommendation by the Policy and Curriculum Committee, approves the update to policy number 5151, substance abuse prevention, as presented. Is there a second? Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, unanimous, thank you. Um, now I need um, a motion uh, for the adoption of the 2015-16 budget. Could I have a motion, please? Move that the Board of Education approve the school year 2015-16 budget in the amount of $65,263,307 for a total of a 2.48% or increase. That was a slip of the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to get it in Wishful there. thinking. <laughs> it's 2.48. 2.48. Okay, could I have a second to that motion, please? Any discussion? Okay, there being none. Actually, I'd like you, to. Oh, yep. I'm sorry. Oh, ma Madam Chair, I'm just wondering, are we going to have um, a roll call vote on this? Yes. Uh, we, we will, and I'm going to ask for it in alphabetical order. Okay. It's just easier. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to <laughs> lean towards one side or the other. Okay, uh, Marion, you had a, do you have a comment? I do. Um, I'd like to say I think the 2.48 budget increase is reasonable, prudent, and necessary. It contains fixed expenses, but also provides much needed technology upgrades, replacement of very old computers, new textbooks, and library books. Um, I appreciate all the effort that Mrs. Botsford, Mr. McLiberty, and Mrs. Lyman put into this budget. This year we heard five detailed presentations on special education, athletics, and technology, and we were able to ask questions to the staff who manage these areas. To name a few, we talked about nurses, counselors, psychologists, 11-year-old computers, unreliable equipment, and I learned more about football helmets than I ever think I need to know. This 2.48% increase stems from those budget presentations and therefore has reinforced credibility as to its necessity. We also had three budget workshops where the questions of all board members were answered in detail. We are a board of education and we must prioritize and value education while at the same time ensuring a wise stewardship of our collective resources. I think this budget is indeed a wise stewardship of our resources. According to the Connecticut State Department of Education, Region 15 spends less per pupil than 63% of the districts in Connecticut. We are providing our students with an excellent education while at the same time spending less than 63% than other school districts. There was a letter to the editor in The Voices last week which stated that Region 15 has not made a single attempt to reduce staff in light of declining enrollment. This is simply not true and it's certainly not fair and balanced. In 2013-14, the district reduced the number of professional staff by eight FTEs, that's full-time equivalents. In 2014-15, we reduced staff by six FTEs. In this proposed budget, we are reducing professional staff by three FTEs. Mrs. Botsford has found efficiencies where it is possible without reducing the value of education to students. We've received, this board has received well over 100 emails from Middlebury and Southbury residents in support of this budget. And there are many reasons given to support the budget, but it seems the most repeated reason was the need for reliable technology. At our last workshop, 
not tonight, the one before, um, I read a part of two emails that we all received, and I'd like to repeat them here for the public that was not at that workshop that night, and for the newspapers as well. This one woman wrote that um, her daughter had expressed frustrations with computers at school and said in one of her classes, it took 10 minutes to load the assignment pages and 10 minutes to shut down, and this left 20 minutes in the classroom time for actual work. And her daughter went to the library to do some work during period nine, and after trying five computers, she was able to get one of them to function properly. Another person who volunteered at, the ele at an elementary school said, that her experience as a volunteer left her convinced that much needed upgrades to the laptop carts are needed. The laptops very often would shut down because the battery was dying. The laptops were charged but would have a very short time until the battery would become drained. Other times the lesson was interrupted because the programs that were planned were not able to run on the laptops. Different programs would freeze or lock up on the computers. It became very clear that these laptops were getting older and updates were needed. I felt badly for the teacher who prepared a lesson only to have to watch, to, to switch the last minute because the students were not able to get onto the programs. Region 15 has benefited so much from the generosity of our PTOs in providing technology, computers, smart boards, projectors, document readers, printers. Unfortunately, we have not funded technology as well as we should have, and now our students are dealing with old and unreliable computers. The time has come for this Board of Education to step up and provide technology our students need to thrive in our schools and to compete in a global society. Thank you, Marion. Any other comments? I just wanted to thank the Regent staff that went out of their way to uh, educate the board this year with the additional budget workshops. Um, and while it was very informative and very helpful to us, I think it's also important to remember that the superintendent and her staff conduct a thorough review of each department every budget year. They focus a specific eye on budget costs. Every department is re-examined to look for efficiencies. After this thorough review, the superintendent came to the board with what I view as a fiscally responsible budget. She shared with us the challenges the region has had to deal with, with budget freezes during the past two school years. Mrs. Botsford reviewed elementary class sizes and explained what would it look like if additional staff, other than the three positions she's recommending, were cut. She recommended some improvements in technology, technology that I think few would argue are long overdue. With the assistance of Mr. McLiberty, she found a leasing option that will spread these costs out over several years in order to ease the budget impact. I am supporting the proposed budget of 2.48. Two years ago, we hired a new superintendent. We hired her because we valued her education, her experience, and her opinion. I invite you to support the administration and listen to her recommendations. She's explained to the board the downfalls of a lower budget. We have heard from the public regarding the many PTO and parent contributions that are being made to supplement not only supplies, but technology and books. We've heard from over 100 taxpayers by letter and have had record attendance at our budget workshops in support of this budget. To me, it is clear we need to move this budget to the taxpayers and give them the opportunity to cast their vote on the budget as proposed by the superintendent. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, we've all worked very hard to get this budget to its present status. <clears throat> I'm in agreement with 90% of the budget, but I'm concerned that a couple of items that were necessary were partially deleted. I just hope in future budgets, <clears throat> okay, that we can give these more consideration and that they have, that we can approve them at that time. Thank you. Madam Chair, I wasn't sure that we were going to give our comments at this point, but I'm going to say the unpopular thing here, the federal CPI this year for our seniors was 1.7 percent. I know that's what the Social Security increase was because that's what I got. I also know that our proposed budget of 2.48 percent is well above the CPI. Between the years 2009 and 10, 
and this year our student population has decreased by 675 students. Our cost per student has increased from $12,946 per student to $16,408 per student, an increase of 26.5% in five years. I believe that we are reaching a time where we need to do more with less, and yet we are not depriving our students of any of the technology, any of the books, or any of the other things they need to do well. In fact, I think Mrs. Botford just said that last year we had a graduation rate of 96.7%. I think that speaks well for what the Board of Education has done regarding budgets in the last few years. I'm just saying that at this point, 2.48% is more than we need to approve in order to keep our education at a level which it is right now, if not better than right now, since parts of the money are for technology and bringing us up into the 21st century. So with that, therefore, my vote will be no toward the 2.48% increase in the budget. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, there being none, we're ready to um, um, to take a vote. And I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to do it in alphabetical order. So, uh, Paul, I'll begin with you. No. Janet? No. Yes. Whoops, John? No. Sharon? Yes. Marion? Yes. Richard? No. Steve? Yes. And I am a yes. So the motion carries. Um, we will be presenting um, uh, the proposed, it is now the board's budget. It is our recommended budget. We'll go before the voters on May 6th, is it correct? May 6th. Um, now we'll make mo we'll, uh, a motion. I need a motion for a referendum. Would somebody please make that motion? Move that in the call to the district meeting, the vote on the motion to adopt the budget shall be a yes or no vote on the voting machines in each of the member towns on the day following the district meeting, as specified in state statute 10-51A, with the Board of Education re recommending the hours to be from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Okay, all the, uh, any discussion? Oh, a second, I'm sorry. Second. Okay, uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any abstentions? Any opposed? I am opposed, as always. Okay, announcement of future meetings. Um, the Finance and Facilities Committee will meet on Wednesday, April 22nd, not on the 9th, Wednesday, April 22nd at 5.30 at Central Office. Our regular um, uh, policies and curriculum will meet in the Media Center at 6 p.m. on April 27th, and our regular board meeting will be in this room, um, room 103 at 7.30. Um, can I have a motion to adjourn, please? Motion to adjourn. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Good night. Enjoy the basketball game.